Second graders, I am so excited to continue learning about people who have made a positive impact on the world we live in through our biography unit. This is a biography of Wu Qiansheng. And when she was born in China 100 years ago, most girls did not attend school. No one considered them as smart as boys, but her parents felt differently. Giving her a name meaning courageous hero, they encouraged her love of learning and science. Queen of Physics, written by Teresa Robinson. How Wu Ching Sheng helped unlock the secrets of the atom. In China, in the small town of Luhe, the Wu family celebrated the birth of a child. The child was a girl. A girl! What would become of her? In those days, girls were not sent to school, not considered as smart as boys, and certainly not encouraged to be scientists. But Mama and Baba Wu did not feel that way. They believed girls should go to school and could become anything they wanted to be. They knew their daughter would be smart and brave, that she would make a difference in the world. Baba named her Qian Sheng, which means courageous hero. Even before Wun Qian Sheng arrived in the world, Baba had quit his job as an engineer and opened a school just for girls. Mama wore out her shoes trudging to every house in Luhe to urge families to educate their daughters. So when Qian Sheng was ready, a school was waiting for her. Baba was the principal and Mama the teacher, teaching little girls to read and write and count. Baba and Mama were courageous too, as they showed their daughter the way. Soon enough, Qian Sheng had learned everything she could from her parents' school. She knew how to count and to add, subtract, multiply, divide. She knew how to read and write hundreds of Chinese words with their strong dots, angled lines, and wispy tails. Qian Sheng was ready for more. But in the 1920s, the next closest girls' school was the city of Shu Hao, 50 long miles of bumpy, dusty country roads away. She would have to live there far from her family and could only go home for winter and summer vacations. Hmm. Mama wept, Baba worried, but they knew their daughter had to be brave and the world to grow. Jian Sheng knew it too, so off she went. The school offered two programs, teacher training and academic. Jian Sheng picked the free teacher training program, but she peeked into the academic program textbooks and saw that they were covered so much more. Science wasn't just science. It was biology and chemistry and physics, all connected by the lovely language of, that's right, mathematics. Oh, and physics, physics, the study of the very matter and energy around her, the study of things that could be seen or felt, heat, sound, light, electricity, and motion, of all things too minuscule to be seen or felt, atoms, and even tinier parts of atoms. Physics captured her heart. During the day, Jian Sheng attended her own classes at night. She studied the academic textbooks she borrowed from friends. She called it self-learning. It was a habit she would keep up for the rest of her life. Her classmates noticed that Qian Sheng worked extra hard and was not afraid of challenges. They asked her to be their leader in their underground group to fight against the government. Citizens were not allowed to say what they wanted. If they supported the wrong political party or said the wrong thing or happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, they could be punished, perhaps even killed, by the government, by the warlords, by rich and powerful foreigners who lived there. The students wanted someone brave to lead them, and they asked Qian Xiong, what would she do? What could she do? Baba had named her courageous hero. She would live up to her name. With her days full of classes, homework, secret studying on her own, and leading student protests and strikes, 
Chi and Chung had little time to miss her family. The years flew by. Now, 17 years old, she graduated with top grades. It would have been easy to go home, but she took the harder path and traveled to Nanjing, three times farther from home than she had ever gone before, to attend the National Central University, where she immersed herself in her favorite subject physics. Once again, her hard work and determination made her a strong leader among the students. Wu Qianxiong led the march to General Chiang Kai-shek's headquarters, where she and her classmates urged his government to resist Japanese invaders just before the start of World War II. Sometimes Qianxiong did not get the job she wanted either, because she was a woman, because she was Asian. Was she sad? Yes. Was she disappointed? Often. Was she discouraged? Occasionally. But she did not let those feelings stop her from doing what she loved. Because Baba always said, ignore the obstacles. Just put your head down and keep walking forward. And that is how a small girl from a faraway village in China went to school. Proved herself as smart as any boy, learned to be a scientist, and even became a queen, the queen of physics. Now my second grade biographers, this was a short version of the book. Um, and so if you would like to check it out at your Chicago Public Library, please do so. It's a very inspirational story.